Welcome back guys to another Clash Royale video and today we're going to be taking a look at this giant furnace guards deck that I've been playing around with. As you can see right here, this is the deck that I have set up. Now there are no legendaries required for this deck, so it's a decent deck for the free to play player to use. But let's go ahead here, take a look at some replays, and then we're going to finish off with a live battle. So here we are guys facing off against Infinity, who is a level 10 in the legendary arena. Now the whole idea with this strategy is to try and get down multiple furnaces and then do a giant push and that way you'll have a constant supply of fire spirits coming in to support your giant. Now the one thing with this deck that I noticed is it does a lot better in the double elixir period and I know that's pretty like common sense and happens for almost every deck because you're making double the elixir and you can do double the pushes but some strategies like the hog rider golem pushes don't require so much elixir to set up to get some damage into the tower but with the giant he just walks so slow and he's so easily distracted that you do need a lot of support cards to, to do a successful giant push and that's why i say it does excel in the double elixir period because you just have so much more elixir to set up a really strong overwhelming push versus strategies that just do quick attacks and get a little bit of chip damage into the tower and then pull back now right here he's coming with that level 8 hog rider unfortunately my opponent does have a higher level cards but thankfully, the Hog Rider doesn't even get one hit at my tower, thanks to the Ice Spirit freezing it for a couple of seconds. Now right here, Giant going in there, but unfortunately, like I said previously, I just don't have the Elixir to support him. And this is what I mean about the Giant excelling in the double Elixir period versus not doing so well earlier on. Now right here, gonna go ahead and use the Musketeer to distract the Valkyrie. But unfortunately, for some reason, my Musketeer stops attacking the Valkyrie before she's actually dead. And as a result, she takes one hit, which I'm not too sure why that happens why your troops stop attacking before their target is actually dead but it is kind of frustrating sometimes now right here gonna go ahead and place down another furnace now i don't have another defense in this deck like a cannon or an inferno tower so i want to use my furnace in the middle of my base to distract other giants distract hog riders and distract royal giants but in double elixir period you can usually get down one furnace in the middle of your base and then place down another furnace behind your tower on that same lane now unfortunately right here his Musketeer does get two hits on my tower because she is a level 8 and my tower plus my Zap spell wasn't enough to kill her. But honestly, not too bad there. Now, both this replay and the next replay do go into the late overtime just because I'm facing higher level cards. And like I said, this deck does excel in the double elixir period. Now, one thing to consider with the Furnace, I know a lot of people consider the Furnace to be overpowered right now, especially in the minor cycle decks. But the Furnace is only really strong if the Fire Spirits that it pumps out are equal level to your opponent's crown towers and the reason being is a level 9 crown tower takes two shots to kill a level 9 fire spirits and a pair of fire spirits one fire spirit will always hit your tower if there's no other troops on the table but versus a level 10 crown tower that same level 9 fire spirit only takes one shot to die so no fire spirits will actually make their way to the tower now right here, I have a pretty decent push going on there with two giants, but unfortunately the first giant does die, second giant making it to the tower, getting a couple hits off, but unfortunately I'm forced to pull back here and defend against this level 8 hog rider, but in the end we don't actually take any damage to our crown tower from that hog rider, and we actually have a decent damage lead so far in this battle. Poison spell going down to finish off that musketeer, and his tower is all the way down to 800 health, my tower is sitting at 1700 health, but later in the battle he does make a pretty strong push, and I am forced to do a pretty clutch win in the now Giant going up here with the Mini P.E.K.K.A and back for support, but unfortunately the Giant is kind of blocking my Mini P.E.K.K.A. She's not really getting anything accomplished as you can see, and unfortunately the Valkyrie does kill her in one hit, so that was a very unsuccessful push right there. But his tower is all the way down to 600 health, but take a look at this huge counter push that he has going around right here. Down goes his Poison Spell, slowing down all of my troops. Unfortunately his Hog Rider doing some decent damage to my tower, bringing it all the way down to 1000 health. Now at this point in the battle, I could try to cycle through multiple poison spells to finish off the tower, but I don't think it'll be enough. I want to be forced to play defense once again. Now one of the downsides to using an expensive deck like this giant deck is my opponent can cycle through their cards crazy fast, and as you can see right there, we have to deal with a nether hog rider. So I don't really have the elixir available for a push, but right here, fortunately at the very last second, using that Zas bell to stun the tower for a quick second, the mini packet was able to go in there give me the one crown victory. Let's go ahead here to the next replay. So here we are guys, now in that last replay, my opponent was using the poison spell, which is actually a very hard counter to the furnace, so I wasn't really able to make really good use of the furnace in that battle, but in this battle here, my opponent doesn't have the poison spell, and he also doesn't have the princess in his deck, which is another hard counter to the furnace. 
So I'm able to make some pretty good use of the furnace in this battle here, but unfortunately I wasn't really dealt a really good starting hand, so I was forced to do a slow push on the right hand side with the giant. That was really the only option I had with the cards that I was dealt. And unfortunately also on the left hand side, I make a terrible play using those guards to counter the uh, miner. And as a result, the prince gets one charge attack on my tower, bringing it all the way down to 2200 health. And also on the right hand side, I don't have enough elixir left to support this push. And unfortunately, he does have some fairly high level cards, like level 11 goblins and level 11 barbarians, so I can't even use my Zaspel spell to one shot those goblins. Now in this game, there's a couple of cards that having a one level difference does make a huge impact on the battle. Goblins are one of them. Um, if you can't one shot your, go your opponent's goblins with a Zaspel, spell, it does make a huge difference. Think of it this way, if your opponent is coming at you with a hog rider goblin push, if you use that Zaspel spell to kill those goblins, you're not going to take a whole lot of damage to your tower, but if you use that same Zaspel spell and it doesn't kill level 11 goblins, then you're going to take a ton of damage to that tower. In fact, you're probably going to lose that tower just because of the level difference. Another example I can think of is a fireball versus a musketeer. If the fireball is one level higher, it'll actually one shot your musketeer, which is a huge difference and a huge game changer in a battle. Now, unfortunately right here, the level 11 barbarian is going down, completely shutting down my push and also the level 11 goblins. But fortunately, the fire spirits going in there, finishing them all off. Now right here, I'm going to pull back and just play it safe and wait till my elixir starts to build up once again. He drops down a baby dragon here. Going to go ahead and use my musketeer to counter it. And then use my miner, or sorry, my mini P.E.K.K.A. to counter the miner rather. And in the end, he does some decent damage to my tower, bringing it down to 1500 health. But I do have a little bit of a counter push going on. Mini P.E.K.K.A. going in there with the musketeer. But unfortunately, once again, he drops down the barbarians completely shutting down my push but thankfully we were able to kill enough of the barbarians that he doesn't have a strong counter push that I have to worry about which is always a good thing so right here we are in the double elixir period time to start setting up some pretty strong pushes I have a furnace down in the middle of my base with a giant coming in the back for a strong push I'm gonna go ahead and use the musketeer to counter that baby dragon and also get ready to take out this witch mini pekka going down the fire spits hopefully killing all the witch's skeletons allowing the mini pekka to walk in there and kill the witch but unfortunately she does spawn some skeletons at the very last second and take a look at these high level cards just dominating my giant in a couple of seconds but thankfully we do have the poison spell down as well as some guards to distract that prince and distract that baby dragon Fire Spits going in there, going to go ahead and use the Mini P.E.K.K.A. once again to counter that Prince. And overall, we're not taking too much damage to my tower. But he does have a pretty strong damage lead so far in this battle. But I do make a pretty clutch comeback later on in this overtime period. Furnace going down once again, and now I have two Furnaces down. So it's time to start setting up some pretty strong pushes with my Giant. Musketeer going down here to counter that Witch. Going to wait to see if I can kill her and finish off and save this Musketeer. Giant going down in front to support my Musketeer. I have a bunch of Fire Spits popping out, hopefully to support my Giant. Poison Spell going down as well, and also the Zap Spell. Now take a look at this. Ice Spirit as well as the Fire Spits going in there, killing those level 11 Barbarians. Giant making his way to the tower, getting some pretty decent damage done. Musketeer finishing off those Goblins. Going in there with the Poison Spell, going to give me the one crown victory over someone with some decently high level cards. Let's go ahead here and do a live battle. So here we go guys, we are facing off against a level 10. Now with this deck right here, I prefer to face a level 9 just because my Furnace, like I said earlier, the level of your Furnace does make a huge difference. Go ahead and zap that. Hawk Rider, going to get one hit off. Now let's use this fire Furnace here. Bad placement though. I was kind of rushing there because I want the Fire Spirits to support this Mini P.E.K.K.A. Fire Spirits right there. And one hit please. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. That is what I wanted. That's why I rushed to place down the Furnace. But, uh, ooh, he's going to leave the battle here. Let's see if we can't do a giant push. Uh, he might have disconnected though. He might have disconnected. But we're going to wait a quick second and just see if he comes back. Um, as you can see right there, both Fire Spirits dying before they make it to the tower. If the Furnace pumps out Fire Spirits that are equal level to your opponent's towers, one will actually make it to the tower. But I'm not too sure if he... Let me know what you guys think. Did he rage quit because the mini packet made it to the tower? Or did he disconnect? Um, let me know what you think in the comment section below. We're going to go ahead and just kind of end this battle early. Drop down another furnace right here. Maybe we'll go ahead and do another one just because this one was so quick um, to finish there. I'm going to go ahead and just zap. Should I zap? Just because. And then we'll get the victory right there. Three crown. That's pretty good though because I do need... I do need my crown chest, so that's not too bad. Ooh, and a giant chest from the battle. So here we go, guys. Facing off against a level 10. Give him the good luck. 
Now, not really the greatest starting hand here if he does come out aggressively. Because even when I do place this furnace down, not what I'm going to do. I have guards and an ice spirit and zap and poison. So, we'll wait to see if he does anything. And then, if we hit 10, I'm going to go ahead and use the poison spell right here. Now, here's the thing. Watch those fire spirits go up and then not do any damage to that tower. If he was a level 9, or if my furnace was level 8 and to, to a competitive level against his towers, they would be getting about 100 damage per push, which over time does make a huge difference in a battle. Uh, so kind of unfortunate that that's the case. Mini P.E.K.K.A. here. Use another furnace. There. Now let's see what he does here. What is he going to use to support this Valkyrie? Um, he might not do anything, but I'm hoping these fire spits pop out and kill her. Ooh, the uh, three Musketeers. Now, unfortunately, they are level eight. Pretty high level. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the... Maybe... They're not going to... The fire spirits aren't going to do any damage to those um, three Musketeers. Go ahead and use that with the Ice Spirit there. Distract that one long enough. Kill her. And we're going to have to soak up a couple shots right there. I don't want to use anything else. I want to try and build up some Elixir for any Elixir advantage. Now let's see here. His tower on the right hand side is a little bit lower. So we're going to do a push here on the right hand side. Now let's see here. If, you've got, if you guys have used a deck with the furnace in it that doesn't have the minor cycle, I'd love to know what you're using because uh, I'm just really interested to hear what kind of decks people are using and making work. Come on, kill that princess. Thank you. What is he going to use back here? Mmm, that Zaspal was not worth it at all. Let's go ahead and use this as well as this. And incoming three Musketeers in half a second. There we go. Totally predicted that. Uh, what do we want to do here? We are in a lot of trouble here, boys and girls. Zap all this. Save our Musketeer. But unfortunately, Mini Peck in the back here. We're going to lose this tower right here. Actually not. We didn't lose it. Kind of surprised that we didn't. Kind of surprised there. Come on, kill that Valkyrie. I don't want her coming back on a counter push. I'm gonna go ahead and zap this. Slow down that mini P.E.K.K.A. and save my furnace, which is really important. Giant going down here. He's probably gonna use the three musketeers in a half a second. There we go. Always predict that. Come on, for poison spell, please. There we go. And my musketeers should finish them off, which is always good. One more shot, thank you. And at this point in the battle, I could just, uh, I could just poison them out. Now, like I said before, if my furnace was level 8, the tower would be dead because that previous fire spirit that just went there would have actually hit it. Let's go ahead and do this musketeer right here, ice spirit right here, giant right here, and wait, I have this poison spell here, why, why aren't I using it? There we go. And that is going to be the end of the battle. Giant's going to go in there and do one punch. There we go, knocking out the tower. Anyways, guys, that's going to be the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. But in the end, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.